Hello and welcome again to Give and Take. I'm Jeff Zwerink and this is the segment where we discuss those challenging and intriguing scientific issues to help you be more confident in the truth of Christianity. Today I'm joined by Ken Samples and Fuzz Rana and we're going to ask the question, were Neanderthals artists like us? Ken Fuzz, good to have you here again today. Jeff. Hi Jeff. So, you know, we see cave paintings and stuff like that kind of scattered throughout the world, but kind of particularly in Europe. And I know that there's this idea out there that Neanderthals are just kind of almost humans, not quite, but they're close. And now there's kind of seems to be some evidence that Neanderthals actually painted some of these art. So I want to just kind of explore first off, what would be the implications of finding Neanderthals actually are artists like us? You know, the way I think about it, Jeff, is from a Christian point of view, from the standpoint of the image of God, uh, human beings are not merely different in degree from the animals, but they're a distinct difference in kind. I would expect that kind to reflect things like art, um, symbolic thought, religion, spirituality. So these are going to be the things that are unique to humanity that if we see somewhere else, that's Trouble, problematic from a scriptural standpoint. I, I think if, if Neanderthals were capable of some of those things, it would raise question as to humanity's difference in kind. Yeah. So, so if we see Neanderthals or, you know, doing art, if you will, what, what sorts of capabilities does that mean they have that would impinge on that, that idea of the image of God? Well, I mean, uh, anthropologists would argue that what makes artistic expression possible is a property called symbolism, which is the ability to represent the world symbolically. Uh, and not only the world, but even abstract ideas symbolically. So when we, we speak or when we write language, that's essentially a manifestation of symbolism. But so is music and so is artistic expression. And what goes along with symbolism usually is what anthropologists call open-ended generative capacity, which is a mouthful, but it yeah. basically means we can embed one idea within another idea. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, we can create infinite alternative possibilities, which allows us to antis anticipate the future, dissect and reflect upon the past. And so when you look at art, which is an expression of symbolism, it also includes this, uh, this manipulation of symbols to communicate an idea or a larger message. So, so this makes it different than just communicating. You know, right. So obviously animals communicate with one another, but it really is more the idea that we're communicating in ways that are not concrete, if you will, that have ideas embedded in ideas, or, or you know, the idea that I can do something or choose not to do it because, not because there's some rational re or material reason driving me, but because I choose to follow God or, you know, mm -hmm. these Im Im yeah. immaterial things. So, uh, so, okay. So this, this, in that context, then if we were to find, uh, Neanderthals actually composing music or drawing art, that would be very problematic then. I would think so. Yes. I think it would lend support for degree and less support for kind. Yeah. So, I want to go and explore. You've written a blog post fairly recently about some cave art, particularly in Europe, I believe it is, that, uh, you know, this is a place where Neanderthals and humanity overlapped for a while, where there seems to be some evidence that the Neanderthals might have painted it. What can I briefly describe? What is that evidence? Yeah, well, <clears throat> uh, traditionally people have ascribed cave art to human beings uniquely. Uh, and human beings made their way into Europe somewhere between 40 and 45,000 years ago. And this is where people have traditionally dated the cave art. Neanderthals were in Europe already before human beings made their way into Europe. About 200,000 years ago, we have Neanderthals in Europe. And so if you date the cave art and it's older than when humans made their way into Europe, you would have to ascribe that art to Neanderthals. Now, it's very difficult to date cave art uh, but recently a technique was developed where people look at calcite formations on top of the art that are produced when water runs down the walls of caves. It will deposit calcite mm -hmm. as a thin, clear film, but in that calcite is a little bit of uranium and thorium, and you can use uranium-thorium dating 
to determine the age of the calcite, which tells you a minimum age for the art. So, so does it have something that tells you behind and in front, or does it tell you well, that this is this stuff is at least this old, so the art has to be older than that? You can. It's it's both scenarios. In okay. some instances, you may have the art produced on top of calcite, mm -hmm. so then you could get minimum and maximum ages. And so these researchers have applied this technique now quite extensively in cave systems, mostly in Spain, and for the most part, the the art dates. Uh, under 40,000 years in age. There are a handful of samples that date uh, at older than 60,000 years in age, and on this basis they're arguing, well, this must have been the product of Neanderthal activity, not human activity. So do we throw our hands up and say, oh, Neanderthals have done this? I assume you have some skepticism of that. Well, uh, the, the assumption is, is, is that this technique is working well as a dating technique, mm -hmm. and the problem is that it's, a, it's, it's what's called an open system by geologists. In order to do radiometric dating, once that structure forms, the calcite forms, you can't have uranium and thorium moving in and out of the system. Right. Uh, but the problem is, is that once that calcite film forms, more water will flow over it, and that water that flows over it will leach out uranium mm -hmm. preferentially. And so if it leaches out the uranium, there's less uranium in there, it will make it look older than it exactly. actually was. So. And so the fact that you only see a few samples that actually date older than uh, 40,000 years in age, and in fact there's even one particular piece of art on the cave where different areas of the art actually date at different ages, which is to me an indication that the technique is right. probably not a reliable technique. So. In that scenario, we've got uh, something that pushes back and makes it close to the time of humanity, maybe pushing it before. Seems to me you could kind of flip that around and say, you know, what we see here is that as soon as humanity arrived, we see an abundance of art. That's a sign that humans are exceptional because you don't see anything for the bulk of all of Neanderthals and questionably even at the end. Th that's exactly right. To me, I think that's the best interpretation is humans had that capability to make art that we brought it with us when we went into Europe, and it, it's now expressed in this cave, in these cave paintings. And we actually now are discovering cave art in Asia that dates at older than 40,000 years in age, just about 40, 45,000 years in age, that looked like it was the work of the first humans, which meant humans before they began to migrate must have had that capability. We're finding, ca or, or sorry, rock art in Africa that date that dates over 70,000 years in age, that's of the same nature as the cave art. Mm -hmm. So when we put it all together, it really looks like this is a capability that humans uniquely had before we began to migrate. You know, it really, there are some discoveries that you kind of look and you say, maybe the Bible doesn't have it right. But when you really dig in, especially when you're looking at cave art, uh, it, the evidence really does point to humanity has that capability. From the earliest that humanity was around, we've had that capability. And everywhere we've spread across the globe, we've brought that capacity for symbolic thought, abstract art, that really is a reflection that we uniquely are made in God's image. And that, again, provides us confidence that the Bible gives an accurate picture of who we are and how we relate to God.